A Bavarian descendant, John Wagner was born and raised in Montreal, Canada, the chosen homeland of his immigrant parents who both arrived separately from Greece during the 1950s. His father, grandfather, and seven aunts and uncles were all born in Paleo Iraklio and all immigrated to Canada during the same period. He continues to pursue genealogy projects that help him understand his Greek and Bavarian roots and hopes to help others understand this aspect of Greek history. Guys, let me tell you that John um, is the fourth uh, recipient of the uh, VHPI grant. And uh, last week, there was an article on Greek history about what he does um, with uh, about the Bavarian colonists of Paleo Iraklio. So uh, you can go ahead, John. Floor is yours. Thank you, Gregory. I'm just going to uh, start uh, sharing my screen. Super. There we go. Are we? Perfect. Is that good? Yeah. Great. Uh, thank you, Gregory. Uh, thank you for the invitation to. Uh, allow me to present uh, the work that I've been doing over the past uh, about five or six years. And uh, thank you for the recognition of uh, having uh, received the, uh, being the fourth uh, beneficiary of the uh, Village History Project Initiative of uh, Greek Ancestry. I'm very, uh, very grateful, very honored to, to have, uh, be a recipient of, uh, of this grant. And uh, to, again, uh, to give me the opportunity to um, talk about a little bit uh, this, this poorly covered aspect of Greek history. Uh, so, um, so just to dive in here. So uh, I created a, a website uh, about a few months ago, about seven, five or six months ago, uh, that highlights the, the work I've been doing over the past uh, few years. So it's a, it's a fairly recent uh, website. And uh, it's uh, basically a summary of uh, the work I've done uh, and the, the way I started my work was uh, the creation of a, uh, of a family tree in, uh, on, on my heritage. But um, I, I quickly realized that the, the family tree in itself wasn't the, the best representation of, of my work. So I decided to uh, create this uh, website to, to complement uh, um, uh, my family tree that appears on my heritage. So I invite anyone to, to visit this uh, website. It's paleoeraclio.wordpress.com. And uh, I think it's a, it's a good source of information on this uh, poorly covered, uh, uh, not, not, not a particularly well uh, described aspect of Greek history. So just to give you an introduction about Paleo Heraclio. So if you do, uh, if you, uh, do a Google search, a map search on, on Google, uh, you'll find out that uh, Paleo Heraclio is the uh, traditional neighborhood that's uh, the, in whose name is still uh, preserved by, by, by Google Maps. And it's uh, located uh, approximately 10 kilometers northeast of uh, the Athens Center. And it was a, a village created by royal decree uh, by King Otto in uh, 1837. And uh, it was established, um, what it appears to be established uh, as, a, as a reward to uh, military men of, of, uh, who accompanied uh, King Otto when he arrived in Greece back in 1832. And uh, it seems that the, this uh, village was created as, uh, as, as an attempt to sort of preserve uh, Bavarian uh, culture at the time. So, um, so what happened was, uh, from all indications, is that um, uh, a group of 31 uh, Bavarian settlers with their families were given a parcel of land uh, in Paleo Heraclio. And uh, from um, out of nowhere, th this parcel of land was, was given to, to these, uh, to these uh, Bavarian settlers, and they were expected to establish a colony uh, that represented uh, this Bavarian community. And, and one thing they have in common is that uh, most of the, the, the men and families were Catholic, and uh, being of Catholic faith, they needed uh, a church. And one of the first things that was created was the uh, the church that would serve the community and uh, Agios Lucas Church, uh, Saint uh, Luke the Evangelist Church, was uh, constructed uh, in uh, in the early 1840s and it was uh, completed in 1846. It's still standing today. Uh, it was uh, 
uh, designed by a Bavarian architect and built by uh, presumably some uh, uh, Bavarian uh, uh, Bavarian military men who accompanied Otto uh, uh, to Greece. And it's still a, an active uh, center of um, of Catholicism in, in Athens. So it's still standing. It still performs uh, church services uh, to this day. And um, I just want to uh, briefly describe some of the genealogical references uh, that I've used uh, that have um, uh, enabled me to begin my uh, research project. And my research project really started about five or six years ago um, when uh, I received a, a, a book from uh, one of my aunts uh, while she was cleaning out her, her, her apartment. And it's a, it's a family history book that was uh, put together by the author Yanis Orsolatos. And uh, it's basically a, a compilation of, of photographs and, and, and stories about Palio Heraclio. And when I received this book, I thought it was very interesting. I thought it, it was very pertinent to, to my work, but I, I didn't really uh, uh, start my project until um, a, a few years later on. And another uh, book that I received uh, is, is a book that was uh, on the bedside of my father who, Frequently consulted this book, and it's a it's a kind of a, a history book um, written by Yorgos uh, uh, Maltesos, and it's a history book that uh, accounts uh, the history of uh, Palio Heraclio, uh, and it refers to a lot of uh, uh, Greek records that are found in the uh, uh, Greek National Archives. And that's my uh, third uh, source of uh, information. That's the Greek National Archives sometimes referred to as the um, GAC or Yenika um, Archea tu Kratos. And uh, this uh, central uh, repository of, uh, of national records is a source of a lot of uh, Atonian era uh, documents. And um, so I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later on. And the fourth uh, major source of, of information that uh, helped me in my project was uh, a family search uh, records, in particular microfilms that were um, uh, created by uh, family search uh, teams uh, back in the early 1980s. And I'll get into each of those a little bit later on. So the main part of my uh, uh, research has to do with the, um, the discovery and uh, identity of the 31 Bavarian colonists who were given this parcel of land uh, to establish the colony of Palio Heraclio. And the names of these colonists were, can be found in uh, Maltezo's book, um, which I described earlier. And uh, it, Maltezo's referred to uh, a document found in, uh, in the uh, Greek National Archives. So I spent a lot of time searching uh, for the original um, document. And I, I was able to track down this document, and it pretty much conforms to the, the names that were established by Maltezos. And it, uh, what you see here is a list of 31 uh, Bavarian uh, men uh, who were given this parcel of land. And, uh, to, and what you see is a document, a handwritten document, um, that gives uh, each of those uh, uh, settlers uh, a parcel of land, uh, some money, and some resources to establish that colony. So, um, so here we have a very unique case where we have um, uh, the establishment of a colony, and we know the names of the and uh, and identities of the uh, of the first uh, settlers. And uh, another aspect of my research is to sort of um, uh, decide or, or uncover uh, how these names appear in uh, the church records or vital records of uh, Ayos Lucas Church. So uh, as I'll show you later on, I've been able to assign uh, a, a large majority of these names uh, to the, or, or relate them to uh, records already found in uh, Ayos Lucas uh, vital records. So uh, just to give you some statistics, uh, 14 out of the 31 members listed here, I've been able to uh, uh, confirm or verify 
uh, in uh, Ayus Lucas Church records, or either in the form of baptism records, uh, marriage records, or death records. Um, 11 out of those 31, I've been able to uh, assign into my family tree. So uh, as, as I'll, I'll describe later on, uh, a, a big part of my research project was the establishment of a family tree uh, that uh, is, is, is my personal family tree, but it, it turns out that my personal family tree is also the family tree of, uh, of these descendants. And of the 31, uh, of the, of the 31 colonists, uh, I've been able to uh, positively identify uh, six out of the 31 as being uh, direct uh, relatives uh, of mine, so direct ancestors. Uh, I've, I've been able to make uh, a firm establishment in my family tree that they are indeed uh, direct ancestors. Um, so what I'll describe now is uh, what uh, what I describe as a holy grail moment, and that refers to a, a, a period of time or a, a document that uh, is so uh, fundamentally important to my research that it, 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 it just it was, it was so significant that I, I refer to it as a holy grail moment. And uh, this uh, document appeared to me as after a, a result of, of many, literally weeks and months of research. So. Uh, for anyone uh, who's familiar with the GAC records, they're not, um, uh, even though they're well, they're well, um, they're well documented and uh, well organized. They're not easy to search, so they're not, uh, they're not indexed in any um, manner. So um, I was able to find a, a group of documents that I believe were were important. So I spent a lot of time searching through each of these images, trying to find a document that would be relevant to my research. And uh, one thing that helped me is that um, my understanding of, of Greek is not is not very good. So uh, one thing that helped me was that these documents um, were written in, in in Latin script. Well, they're written in German, but they're relatively easy for me to to recognize. Even though I'm I I don't I'm not a, a German speaker, I don't understand uh, German. I was able to identify some words, and I was able to understand that these documents were somehow, in, in a sense, very important to me. So I came across this document, and um, there, I, I was able to recognize the, the name Wagner. And um, so I, I, I selected this document, and I, I thought to myself, well, uh, I have this document, but I need a way to, to read it. And um, I remember being sort of conflicted because I didn't know how to go about getting someone to help me to uh, to transcribe this document. So I had uh, the intention of, of perhaps visiting my local university to, um, to help find a, some historian or, or, or uh, professor in, in, of, of German uh, history who might be able to uh, read it for me. But then I realized um, I could use the power of, uh, of, of, the, of the internet and, and what I uh, qu quickly uh, uh, um, realize is I could uh, use Facebook and, and try to find if there's uh, some sort of a, a, a Facebook group devoted to uh, transcribing documents. So I literally uh, looked for a, a, a Facebook group and I, I remember typing in a German uh, genealogy records transcription and lo and behold, there is, there's a, a, a Facebook group devoted to um, uh, transcribing German genealogy records. And it's literally called German genealogy records transcription. So I quickly joined this group. Uh, I, I submitted this document. And so within a couple of hours, uh, some uh, kind-hearted kind person uh, transcribed it for me. And so as I suspected, this document was very important. And it, uh, for one thing, it reveals, it confirms the name of my uh, third great uh, grandfather, his name is uh, Philip Peter Wagner. Uh, it was able, I was able to confirm uh, or, or the name of his wife, uh, who turned out to be uh, Sarah Ryder. Uh, I've been able to find out that he is uh, a winemaker and he's from a, a village in Bavaria called Musbach. And more importantly, I was able to uh, find out the names of his four children, um, Barbara, Joseph, Apollonia, and David. So what this document represents is the official decree that allowed my uh, third great grandfather to uh, emigrate 
uh, to Greece and establish uh, a presence in Greece. So this is what I call the Holy Grail document that, uh, that really uh, helped me in my research. And more importantly, this document allowed me to bridge my research from, from the analysis of, of Greek records to, and now having the ability to look into German records. So I was able to even uh, confirm these names uh, on, on the family search uh, uh, records. Uh, another important uh, source of information that I was able to use is the uh, microfilms of uh, family search. So uh, just to give you a, a bit of a, a background for anyone who's not uh, familiar with, uh, with this, uh, family search um, has a collection of microfilms and are, they're basically uh, a collection of um, vital documents that have been uh, documented, photographed over the years and put in the forms of, of, of microfilms. So uh, back in 1982, a, a group of um, individuals from the Utah uh, Genealogical Society, also known as uh, the Mormons, uh, and, and today known as the Family Search uh, 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 Enterprise, uh, they uh, arrived in, uh, in Greece with the purpose of photographing uh, uh, church records. So it turns out one of the churches that they visited back in 1982 was Igos Lucas Church. And uh, they set up their photographic equipment and dutifully photographed um, the vital church records, the baptism, marriage, and death uh, records of Igos Lucas Church. And um, so, so this uh, microfilm was available uh, up until 2017 as a uh, as part of a loan program. So uh, up until 2017, you could lend out or you could borrow these microfilms, uh, have them sent to your local uh, family history center, uh, where you could view the records uh, that appear on these microfilms. And that's what I did, and that was a big uh, chunk of my research was uh, transcribing these uh, church records that were uh, written on these uh, uh, on this mic one microfilm. Uh, um, so just to summarize, um, uh, there were like approximately 627 baptismal, baptismal records uh, from 1846 to 1956, uh, 234 marriage records and 476 death records. And uh, one interesting aspect about this was that uh, these church records are written in Latin. So um, I was able to, uh, with little difficulty, to, to sort of read these, these records, uh, uh, extract the most important information and put it in the form of an Excel uh, database. And uh, this is how I was, I was able to construct a, a fairly detailed family tree, which uh, appears in, on my heritage. And it's like I said, this is my personal family tree, but it's also uh, it's basically the family tree of those uh, um, Bavarian settlers that that arrived or, or established uh, themselves in uh, Palio Heraclio. Um, currently, the tree has around a thousand members, and um, uh, from what I know, this represents the, the first and perhaps the the only attempt that I know of uh, to reconstruct the family tree of, of these original settlers. Um, like I said, there's, there's a thousand individuals in, the, in this tree. Uh, the earliest ancestor I can trace uh, uh, dates to an individual uh, born around 1650. And of course, these are German records. These are not the uh, Greek records. Uh, these are uh, records that I was able to get from family search. Um, and just uh, as, as with any research project, uh, uh, we always come across some discoveries and, and surprises. So I just want to uh, describe some of the interesting facts that I came across uh, during my research. And, and one of the important or, or, or surprising discoveries is that my name is not actually Wagner. It's actually Wanger or Vanga. And um, I was able to confirm this. Uh, and um, it seems uh, the, the the name Wagner is it's, it's, it was kind of improperly transcribed over the years, uh, but it turns out that the proper spelling of the name is Wanger, 
And it turns out that the uh, current day uh, inhabitants of Palio Oracle who, who do have the name Vanger spell their name um, in, in the Greek form Vanger. And that's actually the correct um, transliteration of, 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 the, of the name. Uh, so I, I guess in my part of the family, uh, as they arrived to, to Canada, uh, the, the name kind of was not transcribed properly. So uh, I, I go by Wagner. Um, and but in, in my, my relatives in Greece who, who have the same uh, roots uh, would refer to themselves as Vanger. Uh, another interesting aspect is that uh, I learned that um, uh, in Agios Lucas uh, baptism records, that uh, in especially the early records, um, the, the parents would follow a German naming tradition of children. So uh, the children would be named after their godparents, not their grandparents. Uh, surprisingly, it took me it took me a while to realize this, but it, it was very obvious that it from the baptismal records that uh, without exception, almost every uh, every child that was born was named after their godparents and not after the, the grandparents, which is kind of like tradition you would find it in, in Greece uh, today. Um, Bavarians or, or Germans use what's known, known as a Rufnamen. Rufnamen is kind of like a, uh, like a nickname and it's, um, it's a name that it's used uh, kind of like for lack of a better word, it's kind of like a, a daily use name. It's a kind of a name that people would would normally refer to you. Uh, so, um, so what you have is you would have a given name, and then you would have the Brufnamen, which is kind of like a nickname. Uh, so, uh, in in these records, I would find that sometimes the the official name is used, sometimes the the, the nickname is used. Uh, so I. I that that complicates some of my searches, and it took me a while to realize that uh, um, you have to sort of consider both possibilities when when looking for names. Um, the German language and the German tradition was, uh, for lack of a better word, they were quickly I would say assimilated uh, uh, into into Greek society. Um, so. Even today, there's no there's no real really strong uh, Greek uh, sorry the German influence. Um, what you do have uh, the colony of Paleoraklio was was quickly um, uh, there was a very very uh, um, substantial uh, introduction of, um, of of colonists or, or people from Malta and uh, Syros. And so you, you could imagine this German uh, colony uh, consisting of 31 families, um, uh, it, it wouldn't have a, a very strong potential to perpetuate itself unless there was a strong influx of, of, of other communities. And that, that was quickly, uh, that was pretty obvious. Uh, and, and so that's the reason why you would see a, an influx of, of, of Maltese and Syros uh, immigrants into the community. Um, so one, one strong aspect of, uh, of, of Paleo Heraclio history is that uh, it has deep roots also in Catholic Syros. So, so given the influx of people from Syros and Malta, uh, what you see is, uh, is, is a quick uh, disappearance, of, disappearance of, the, of the German uh, traditions and cultures. And the, the history of Palio Oraclio is really the story of how uh, the Catholic religion uh, persevered and uh, survived. Uh, and and, and it, it's really that's the Catholic religion is really the, uh, the glue that held this um, uh, community together. Um, and another last uh, surprising aspect of, of, uh, upon of what I've discovered during my research is that uh, my family history resembles closely that of the Fix family, uh, which is the, the beer brewing dynasty. So Fix was uh, one of those Bavarians who ac accompanied Otto when he, uh, he arrived uh, to Greece. And the Fix family had a presence in uh, Palio Heraclio, and uh, they basically established their, uh, their, their brewing dynasty in Palio Heraclio. So, so my family history would uh, resembles very that very quickly, or very uh, similarly the uh, the history of of the fixed family. 
Um, right now, I just want to uh, describe some of the resources uh, that you could use to learn about a little bit more about uh, Bavarians uh, in Greece. Of course, my, my website, which uh, I established a few months ago, uh, I invite anyone to, to visit my website. Uh, I came across another website called uh, Greco Germanica, which is a uh, kind of a blog style website uh, that um, uh, every once in a while there's a nice article written about uh, the, uh, the, the life and, and uh, traditions of, of the Bavarians who, uh, who, who established their, their lives in Greece. Uh, it's it's not a it's not a, a genealogical um, uh, website. It's more of a historical, and it, and it gives you a very a, a good uh, feeling about what life was like for these uh, early Bavarians in Greece. And for anyone who wants a nice uh, uh, video representation of the history, uh, I recommend a video by Yanis uh, Karayanakos. Uh, uh, it appears on YouTube, and you can find a link if you visit my website. And it's a nice 30-minute uh, 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 video, a very well well uh, produced uh, video about uh, Bavarians uh, in Greece. Uh, acknowledgements: uh, I'd like to acknowledge my my sister uh, Josephine Wagner Costales, who is uh, another uh, Bavarian descendant <laughs> uh, like myself. And um, and the reason why like to acknowledge my sister is because about 30 years ago she had the presence of mind to take a gigantic sheet of paper and visit my uh, living relatives at the time and she attempted or, or constructed uh, a nice family tree uh, which is very detailed and it really helped me in my research and so I'm very grateful to my sister who upon finding out that I, I was interested in genealogy and that I was interested in, in learning more about my, my history uh, she um, she sent me by by mail this this giant sheet of paper which she folded and, and sent off by by, by mail. Uh, so I'm very grateful for my sister for having done that. Uh, Yanis Rosolatos is uh, the um, author of a book uh, a picture book of the history of Paleoraclio. Unfortunately, I found out uh, a couple of months ago he he passed away and um, he was a. a, a village historian of Paleo Raclio who, who I, I've met and I communicated with them many times and he provided some valuable information that was always very helpful uh, answering some of my questions about uh, Paleo Raclio. Of course I want to thank Gregory uh, for of, of Greek ancestry who gave me the opportunity uh, to present this, uh, this uh, small uh, presentation on Paleo Raclio. Uh, I'm very grateful, very honored to have the opportunity to do so. Um, Carol Kostakos uh, Petranik, I'm very grateful for uh, the information that you constantly uh, uh, and, and re information that you put out for our, the, the Greek uh, genealogical community. Uh, your advice and, and 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 again for for organizing this conference and to to both of you, I'm very grateful for uh, for this uh, opportunity. Um, I just want to round things out by talking about a little bit about uh, Greek Ancestry's Village History Projects Initiative, and, and as Gregory will talk a little bit a little bit later on, uh, this is a a platform that encourages uh, like-minded researchers to share their family and, uh, and village histories uh, uh, in in one central location on uh, Greek Ancestry's uh, website. It uh, could be in the form of an fa online family tree, a website, an ebook. Um, it was formed a couple of years ago and it currently has 22 projects. And of course, um, as, uh, as Gregory said, uh, my uh, history project, uh, Family Histories of Paleo Raclio, was chosen as the fourth beneficiary of the Village History Project Initiative. Uh, and I'm very grateful for the recognition and for the uh, and, and for the opportunity uh, today to present my work. Uh, thank you, Greg and Carol. Um, I invite anyone to, to visit my website uh, and to communicate with me for anyone who has uh, any questions about Palio Heraclio, uh, any questions about how to uh, present their research uh, in the form of a, of, of a website or, or uh, a family tree, by all means, I, I welcome any uh, questions or comments. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, John, for a great presentation and for a great project. The story behind it is so interesting. So I hope uh, you will be able to further uh, advance your research and expand. And of course, uh, you set a very good example for, for others to start similar projects. So thank you. thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day.